February 14th. People can't wait to watch 13 straight episodes of House of Cards. I would think that's a huge positive for Netflix. Things have changed. What do you think? Well, I think it is a positive. I look at how we're all talking about it. Um, but I think it, it really fails on, on several points, uh, on the social, on the artistic, and the uh, financial aspects of it. So what do, you think, what do you think is the problem with it as far as the fact that, I mean, obviously it's not good for you to sit down and watch uh, 13 hours of a, a television <laughs> show. I would think that that's clear, but everybody thinks it's so controversial that you don't think binge watching is a good idea. Do you think it's not a good no, idea socially, or do you think it's not a good idea for the company? I, th I think both. I think from a social perspective, you know, one of the one of the really great ways to build viewership and build excitement is for people to talk about the episode uh, during the course of work or in, during their breaks or when they're having dinner with friends. And, you know, the problem with binge watching is, you don't know whether your friend has seen the full the full show or seen the episode that you're at and so everybody stays mum i mean you're afraid to give away what happens in the next episode so it it really you know creates this kind of cone of silence over the course of a couple months after the the release dick are you buying that or is it a positive because people are just watching more content no, no, I'm, I'm buying the conclusion i don't know that i have the same reasons for it but you know what you want to do in TV is you want to habituate viewers. You don't want to create you don't want to create a movie model where they come and they sit for whether it's two hours or thirteen hours and watch something and then go away and come back in six months. You want to habituate users, and so I think Mitch is right that that from the point of view of the business model, binge watching is not good for the company. Uh, now on the social side, that, that's a larger issue. You know do we, we're moving from a you know a country to where everybody used to see the same news and the same programs and sit around the water cooler the next day and talk about what they saw last night. There are too many different ways to get stuff now, and that, that you know, sort of monolithic market perspective is, is fragmenting. But from a business perspective and a revenue-generating perspective, I think it's, uh, it's dangerous. It's moving television into the realm of movies, and, um, which is a less good business than television. Life. And as an art form as well, Mitch, you're saying it's a problem because uh, it ruins some of the old arts of, say, the cliffhanger. Although I feel like still in House of Cards, after each episode, the reason I'm binge watching is because I have to watch the next episode uh, after the previous one ended. Yeah, no, that's that's right. But from you know, from the people who are writing and creating these cliffhangers. What you really want is you want that build up, that expectation, thinking about what's going to happen next, talking about it and sharing those ideas uh, with friends. And, you know, it, it may be a little retro, but, but that was what happened back in the 20s and 30s when you had these weekly serials at, uh, at the movie theater. But Mitch, and, is there and, a way to even unwind that at this point? I know when I was a kid, I was sure to be home on Thursday nights because I wanted to see the Cosby show at 8 o'clock. My kids don't even know right. what networks they watch their shows on anymore. They watch it when they want. Can't put the genie yeah. back in the bottle. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that may be the case. But financial, I think, as, as Dick says, is, as a business model, uh, this really reduces your ability to build the build the the customer base and the people that are watching it. So, uh, you know, I think the jury's still out. I think we'll see. You know, if you put this in perspective, you know, there's like you know, almost 900,000 hours of programming on the typical you know cable uh, cable series that people subscribe to, and over a hundred thousand hours of movies available between these you know, big services like Netflix and Amazon. And, and so it's, you know, as a percentage, this is a, a teeny, teeny percentage, less than two-tenths of a percent of what people watch. So it, it, it's, the, the impact individually is probably not all that great.